Welcome to another Foldit Lab Report. I am BKEP here at the Institute for Protein Design with my colleague Ian H. If this is your first time tuning in to a Foldit Lab Report, we produce these videos on the first of every month to tell you more about the science behind Foldit. The big news this month, the Foldit team has just launched a huge update with brand new tools for small molecule design puzzles. In the past, almost all Foldit puzzles have centered on one kind of molecule, proteins. The goal of Foldit prediction puzzles is to fold up proteins with a provided sequence. The goal of design puzzles is to fold up a protein with a brand new sequence. In small molecule design puzzles, you won't fold up any proteins at all. The task is to design a brand new chemical compound, also known as a small molecule. In a way, small molecule design is very similar to protein binder design puzzles that we've challenged you with before. We're trying to design something that sticks to a target protein binding site. In practice, these small molecule design puzzles will have very different gameplay with different strategies and tools that you'll use. But some of the scientific principles will sound very familiar if you've played some of our protein design puzzles. Your designed small molecule should have a shape that is complementary to the target binding site. It should fit snugly against the target protein. Also, remember that hydrophobic contacts make for tight binding. Just like in proteins, carbon atoms are great for making hydrophobic contacts. But we can also use different types of atoms in our small molecules that simply aren't available during protein design. Like carbon atoms, halogens, like fluorine, can also make sticky hydrophobic contacts, and in some cases can even fit into a pocket better than a carbon atom. There are also some concerns in small molecule design that we don't usually have to think about in protein design. And for that reason, small molecule design puzzles will have some new objectives. The first one is all about rotatable bonds. Many of the chemical bonds that make up a small molecule can rotate, and this introduces flexibility into the small molecules that we design. We don't want too much of this because a floppy small molecule is unlikely to adopt a rigid shape that will reliably bind to the target. In small molecule design puzzles, you'll want to keep these rotatable bonds to a minimum. One big advantage of small molecule drugs is that they can be formulated into a pill and swallowed. No need to go into a hospital for an infusion. However, there are still some requirements for an oral drug to be properly absorbed in the stomach and then to cross cell membranes and reach its actual target. One of the most important is molecular weight, which refers to the size of the chemical. Effective oral drugs are usually very small. Larger compounds with a high molecular weight are less likely to work their way throughout the body. Another thing to consider are the number of atoms that can serve as hydrogen bond donors. Too many polar atoms, and especially hydrogen bond donors, will make it difficult for our small molecule to cross the cell membrane, which is super hydrophobic. We generally want to keep the number of hydrogen bond donors to a minimum. The last objective we want to cover is called synthetic accessibility. This objective detects features in a small molecule that make it difficult to actually produce or synthesize in the lab. If your designed chemical violates the synthetic accessibility objective, we probably won't ever be able to study it in the lab. Keep an eye on this objective and you'll be able to design small molecules that are ready for testing. These are just a few of the objectives we need to think about when designing new small molecules. Different puzzles may have slightly different objectives. For a complete list, just check out the objectives panel at the top of the screen when you open the puzzle, or check the puzzle comments on the Foldit website. In this month's puzzle mm -hmm. updates, I want to focus on a new series of small molecule binder design puzzles that will accompany the new tools. These puzzles will help researchers develop a class of drugs called Protax. Your cells actually have a process for breaking down old proteins that are no longer needed so that their amino acid components can be recycled into new protein. A Protac drug acts like a homing signal for this recycling system. The Protac doesn't disable the target protein itself, but it marks the protein for destruction. For more details about Foldit's Protac project, check out the blog. For this month's design of the month, I want to look at a symmetric design puzzle. This is puzzle 2050, a symmetric D2 tetramer design. For this design, we have a collaboration between Skippy Skates, Enzyme, and an anonymous teammate. So this is unique. It's unlike our symmetric um, cyclic tetramer designs, where this, this design actually has two different C2 axes. So I'm looking down one here, 
and there's another one over on this side. And this, this is what defines the D2 symmetry. If we look at just the subunit, the asymmetric subunit, this looks like a very nice helical bundle. Um, we have mostly short loops between all the helices, which is good. Uh, we like short loops. Um, we see lots of blue hydrophilic polar residues on the surface and lots of orange hydrophobic residues in the interior. And that will make sure that this protein subunit folds up correctly. We do also see that there are some hydrophobics on the surface, and that's what will make this a protein assemble, we think, we hope, into a, a symmetric assembly with other proteins. Um, even though there are some of these hydrophobics on the surface, this protein still has lots of blue polar residues interspersed on the entire surface. And this is important. If any of these helices were completely hydrophobic, covered in orange residues all the way around, that would give me pause that this protein might not fold up. But I like to see that there are lots of blue residues even at the interface where this protein comes together. Of course, the problem with blue residues at the interface is that they can form buns if they don't make the correct hydrogen bonds. And one of the really impressive things about this design is that all of these blue residues that are buried in the core of this assembly are making all of the necessary hydrogen bonds. So these are 100% satisfied side chains here in, let's see if I can, here in the core of the protein. So here if I adjust the clipping plane so we can see these nice pair of what, a glutam glutamine residues that form hydrogen bonds across this C2 interface and then reach over to a histidine, which reaches over to another, what may be a spartate and an asparagine, and that gets us out to the solvent. So this looks very nice to me. These are, these are all 100% satisfied. Um, there is this bond between, if we zoom in here, this bond between the two asparagines is a weaker bond. And we can tell because in fold it is displayed as a, as a thinner bond. But that's because this hydrogen is not pointing directly at the carbonyl, which we would like to see. Um, so this, this bond is actually not as strong, um, but it, we could still probably get away with it, I would hope. But this is nice to see. This is, this is a very nice hydrogen bond network that we love to see. It is buried in the core. It is completely satisfied. And it should confer some specificity to this protein. Um, so uh, this protein should be very unlikely to assemble into off-target states. It should only be able to assemble into this one designed D2 tetramer. All in all, this is excellent work from these Foldit players. Uh, as always, please, please, please share your favorite designs with scientists using the Upload for Scientists button. We always love to see which designs are your favorites regardless of how they score. That's all for this month. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for playing. And we'll see you next time.